Our commencement speaker, Dr. Quina N. Lee Chua, graduated from the Ateneo de Manila University in 1987 with a degree in BS Mathematics, summa cum laude. She also received a master's degree in counseling psychology and a doctorate degree in clinical psychology with the same university where she is now a full professor. She writes the All in the Family column for the business section of the Philippine Daily Inquirer every Friday. Her column, Eureka, used to appear in the learning section where she now does fit hearers. She also writes a monthly column, Homework for Working Moms magazine. She has written more than 40 books on mathematics, popular science and IT, education and psychology, family businesses, and inspirational stories. She used to host the TV show, Fun with Math, on PTV4. She also headed a Teneo team that studied the best practices of Filipino public and private school achievers and the media habits of Filipino youth. A frequent speaker for schools, government, civic groups, and business, she is also a consultant to schools, family businesses, NGOs, education group, the Department of Education, and the Department of Science and Technology. A past governing member of the National Book Development Board, she specializes in mathematics and science education and learning psychology, popular math and science, parenting, teen and children's issue. She has been a commencement speaker to several schools. She also served as Philippine representative to the governing board of the Regional Center on Math and Science Education in Penang, Malaysia. She sits on the board of business, academe, government groups, including that of Ateneo de Manila Family Business Development Center. She has garnered many awards, among them, the Outstanding Young Filipinos, the Outstanding, Philippine, Outstanding Women of the Nation Service, the Metro Bank Foundation Outstanding Teacher Award, the DOST Great Men and Women of Science, the Outstanding Young Scientist, the Bato Balani Tribute to the Teacher's Honorary, the Jose Rizal Award for Excellence, the National Book Award, the National Science and Technology Journalism Award, Outstanding Science and Technology Columnist, and the Carlos Palanca Memorial Award for Literature. She was featured in Asia Incorporated Magazine, Who's Hot in Asia, and the Singapore Heritage Center, Southeast Asian Personalities of Chinese Descent. In 2020, Ten, with a Malaysian scientist, she became the first person to receive the Third World Academy of Science Regional Prize for Public Understanding of Science for the East Asia, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific region. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our commencement speaker, Dr. Quina N. Lee Chua. Good afternoon, university officials, Dr. Dali on down. Dr. Dali is actually a friend. We have met and, uh, in several projects before. And this is my second visit to UMAC. Uh, the first one was a few months ago when I did something on year 11 for K-12 senior high school for teachers all around the Philippines. And I was very, very impressed. I still am, one, by your facilities, and two, by how dedicated your people are. I spent two hours speaking with Dr. Mila, your dean, and I know at heart she's such a, she's so proud of the school. I think, kung ako siya, ako rin, how far you've come, and the legacy you guys are fortunate to receive, and the legacy you should also continue to uphold. Okay, so what is going to be the content of the talk? I slept through my own commencement graduation years ago because the, the speaker who was a very nice person who was in government just talked about the facts and the programs. You are going to be teachers, so I'm going to talk directly to you of what it really means to be a teacher. I know with your education units, you know about Jerome Bruner, you know about Bloom's taxonomy, you know about UBD, you know about this and that, this and that, this and that, and they're all very important. But in reality, 
You only need to know, not only need, but if you keep in mind and in your heart just two things, I think you're going to be a very effective teacher. What are these two things? Knowledge and love. That's it. And it's not me who said it. The one who said it is Jaime Escalante. Those of you who are graduates of innovation in math, I'm so happy to know there's innovation in math. Those of you who are doing BSE, majoring in mathematics, uh, Jaime Escalante, I'm sure you know, and this should be required. I'm assuming that you guys have watched Stand and Deliver, the Hollywood movie, so he is the star of Stand and Deliver. If you haven't, download it from YouTube and watch because it's inspirational. It's inspirational because it's true. You don't have to make it up. Just a little bit on Jaime Escalante and why he's the one I'm quoting and not any of the other education people. Jaime Escalante was from Bolivia and he went to the US as an immigrant, had to work odd jobs. He longed to be a teacher. And one day he got his wish. He went to Garfield High School in East Los Angeles. This was in the 1970s. And at that time, Garfield High School had the worst scores and graduation rates of American students across the country. The mortality rate was 25 to 26 because the kids felt they're all in gangs and you don't last long in gangs. And none of them were going to go to college. How many people go to college? Isang tao o wala. So Jaime Escalante went in and he felt this is not the way our kids should face the future. This is America. So what did he do? He fought actually against the city government. He fought the administration. He had some allies, but he had some teachers who said, Jaime, don't give them dreams. They're just here. We don't need dreamers. If you give them dreams and they won't achieve the dreams anyway, you're doing them a disservice. He said, well, I'm going to give them dreams and I'm going to make sure that they achieve it. So if you know the movie, which is actually true, okay, it does, Jaime Escalante was played by Edward John Olmos and his star pupil was played by Lou Diamond Phillips. Okay, so in the movie, you will find out he enters a high school class of junior and senior high school and they barely know how to count. Walang algebra, we're not talking about algebra. We're talking about fractions. What is one half? What's one third? There are parts in the movie wherein he cuts up an apple and then he shoots it to the student. Sinabi niya kay Lou Diamond Phillips. O ano yan? Sinabi niya one third. Sabi niya, see, you can do math. So it's, and it's not patronizing. It's not small math. Because he did not end with fractions. He did not end with algebra. He told the kids, most of whom never went, never felt they would go to college, most of whom felt that they would not even live long. He told them, I want all of you to take the advanced placement calculus exam, which only the wealthiest kids can do. These kids don't have tutors. They can barely survive. Many of you I know come from disadvantaged communities. These kids, same thing. You actually even have an edge. Your mortality rate is going to be better because you're not in gangs, and you're not always in drugs, etc. These kids, wala talaga. No, wala. Walang pangarap. So, as the movie goes on, he talked with the parents, he managed to get the community to rally behind him, and in the end, every single person in the class took the exam and passed. Advanced placement calculus. Ito yung mga walang alam mag, you know, to count. And yet, with the teacher's help and with their own perseverance, they were able to do it. But this is real life. Kung Hollywood, tapos na yan eh. This is real life. You know what happened. Many, some of you are nodding. When all his students passed the exam, the California board said, you cheated. Because no one in the history of California passed. It's a 100% passing rate. Like cheat kayo. So nangyari, sinabi niya, nagalit yung mga bata, Nako, they don't believe us, yung mundo, ang sama ng mundo, etc. He said, look, masama yung mundo. Life is not fair. Life is difficult. You are poor. People will think if you're good that you did something wrong. So what should you do? You take the exam again and you pass it and you get even a higher score. And some of the students did not want to do it. 
Who cares? They'll never believe us anyway. He said, well, you have to. You have to because you're speaking for the Latinos in America. You're speaking for every poor person in America, and if you stop now, they will always think we're failures. So they took the exam again, and they passed. And 10 years after Jaime Escalante started teaching in Garfield High School, the first class was 10 people taking math, taking advanced placement. 10 years after, he had more than 500 students from the wealthiest districts in California going into this public school because they felt that this was a teacher who believed in them and who will make them be the best they can be. And that is why he is the one who is the basis for my talk to you today. Because he was there and he did it. He passed away 2010 of cancer. He was very poor. And to pay for his cancer, his students. His students were the ones who paid for his cancer. They're already professionals and they went to college. Why did I become a teacher? I did not know about Jaime Escalante then. And many times when I give talks, not just to education groups, I give talks to business, I give talks to government abroad, etc. One of the worst, one of the worst sessions, which was quite hurtful, was after I gave a presentation on mathematics and business, etc. During the Q and A, there was one business person, executive, who was actually bastos. Okay, he said it. Bumdo siya sa mic. Sinabi niya, doctora. Magaling kayo. Sabi ko, salamat. Gusto sinabi niya, bakit ka lang nagtuturo? Why are you just a teacher? Lang. Just. You are going to be teachers. Many of you are teachers now. The society look, how does society look towards teachers? Education, every politician will tell you, is very important. But why is it we have to fight for our budget? Why is it teachers are not paid well, etc., etc.? So the society doesn't walk the talk. Why is it? Because society feels that the good people go into finance, business, etc., science, and then the ones who cannot, you know, the ones who are just, lang. Magturo ka na lang, kasi yan lang yung magawa mo. And that is so insulting, and that is so wrong. But it is up to us to enhance the dignity of the teaching profession. How do we enhance it? Going back to Jaime Escalante, knowledge and love. One, knowledge. Please, teachers, you have to master the subject you're going to teach. Mastery does not mean you're just one chapter ahead of your students. I've seen that in many schools. Natatakot sila. Or mastery does not mean, eh, ayaw ko namang turo ng math eh, kasi PE graduate ako, pero kailangan ng eskwelahan ng math, so ako na yung pinaka-math kasi ako yung by PE. I have no idea what this had to do with anything. But we have excuses. If, yes, the school you go to needs a math person and you're not math, you will not say, hindi ko kaya, kasi kaya mo. That's mastery, kaya mo. University of Makati kayo, kaya ninyo yan. You have a core curriculum. Yes, it is not your first love. But why? Should we always do everything we love? We have to do things sometimes we do not like in order to do the things for a nobler cause. So, mastery. One. Two. Knowledge also means keeping up to date with, with topics. Let me tell you a story from my own. I was a math major, as you can hear from that introduction. And after quite a while, I went also into psychology. Right now, I'm teaching in mathematics and psychology. And later, I'll also tell you my experiences in teaching English in the Ateneo. So when I was teaching psychology, psych, psych 101, introductory psychology, I remember when I was in college, my psych teachers would make a big thing about self-esteem. Marami sa inyo. Early childhood, alam niyo yan. So ang sinasabi lagi sa atin, importante ang self-esteem. Kasi yung, if the kid does not have good self-worth, then the kid will have no confidence and that the kid will not do well, etc., etc., etc. And I believe that. So for the first five years of my psychology teaching, I would always teach about self-esteem. We had a test on self-esteem, on ways on how to raise self-esteem, etc., etc., etc. 
I thought everything was fine until the year 2000. I was in the library looking at the psychology journals, and to my shock, I found out that one of the headlines of the journals was, there is, some, there is such a thing as too much self-esteem, which was scary. This was the year 2000, but everybody was saying you should have it. Apparently in America, they found out when they did studies of prisoners on death row, you know, the most violent ones, the ones who are murderers, rapists, etc. And they gave them self-esteem tests. They found out that these prisoners scored very high on self-esteem. Wala silang remorse. Parang, whoa, okay yung ginawa namin. So America was, there was a big furor about that. Parang, nako, does it mean that we should not do this? Paano yan? Bakit ganon? So when I did that, I had a talk with some of the, my psych colleagues and I said, we cannot teach it this way. So we, I assigned instead the reading self-esteem, pro and con. That's the way you do it. What is the, I'm happy to tell you, that was the year 2000, now it's 2015. Right now, the textbook we are using in the Ateneo were very much updated. So the textbook is 2014, okay? Every two years, we change the textbook. Do our teachers like it? Some do not because they have to change their lesson plan. But we have to, it evolves, psychology evolves. You have to change it every single, if you have to change your textbook every single year and revise your rest lesson plan every single year, you have to. Because that's the only way you can teach what is the latest and the most up-to-date knowledge. So I'm happy to tell you, by 2014, the self-esteem chapter is no longer there. And right now, the textbook we're using already has a nuanced thing about self-esteem. But if I did not update myself, I would be teaching the wrong thing. And my God, if I'm teaching the wrong thing, how can I call myself a teacher? Huwag ko nalang turuin kaysa yung mali. Ganun nalang. Huwag mo nalang sabihin yon kaysa mali ang sasabihin mo. So that's one personal one. So I'm always very scared about, you know, updating. Uh, please make sure your lesson plans are not 10 years old, ah. Okay? Because maraming teachers na ganun, ah. Yun talagang wala nang ano. So... That, that one, yellow na, hindi na nga yellow eh. Parang ano na, mothballed na eh. So that's, that's one, okay? Knowledge. Next one, love. I told you it's two things. It's knowledge and love. Love is harder. Love does not mean romantic love, please, students, okay? Do not fall in love with your students. They will fall in love with you. I guarantee that. They will. They will have crushes on you. They will give you love letters. They'll ask you to be their Facebook friends, etc., etc., I'm not sure you should be their Facebook friends, okay? Um, they will ask if they can call you by their first name. Please, they cannot. You are still Miss Ganito and Mr. Ganito. It is okay to be their friend, but it is better to be their teacher. You are not their barcada. You are their teacher. You're their surrogate parents. So love does not mean romantic love. And this is also the other thing. Love also does not mean that you like them every day. How can you? We're human. There's some students who are more lovable than others, diba? Right? There's some students who study without being told. There's some students who get high grades. And there's some students, wala ka ng bosses, di pa rin nakikinig sa'yo. Oh, diba? Right? That's the reality. That's in the field. Can you honestly say that you like all of them? Of course you don't like all of them. But you love all of them. Because love is not an emotion, whatever the Philippine media might think. Love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. Love is a choice. I became a teacher because I choose to love my students. And what is Jaime Escalante's definition of love, which is also mine? For me, love means having high expectations of my students and making sure I do my best to make them meet those high expectations. Bakit hindi lang pwede high expectations? If you only have high expectations of your students, but you don't teach them well, you are what they call a terror teacher, and they hate you. And I'm very sorry to say, many mathematics teachers used to have that pressure. You don't want to be a terror teacher. You also don't want to have low expectations. Look at Jaime Escalante. Ayan ka lang, di na ako magbibigay ng mahirap na exam kasi di mo naman kaya. Eh, bakit ka turo? Iba na lang gawin mo. Be a clerk. So high expectations, 
ways for them to meet that high expectations. If you have the knowledge and the love and the decision, you can do it. One story about how I, I tried my best to be that teacher I felt I should be. Math is easy for me to do. Psychology is easy for me to do. But one time, Ateneo offered me an honorary professorship in the Department of English and asked me to teach English. I was quite apprehensive because, well, because I'm the only non-English person who's ever been asked to teach English. So I was talking with the dean and I said, Paano yan? You know, ang lakas ng English natin. What more can I teach which the English faculty is not teaching? They said, oh, you have free reign with whatever your course is. Nakakatakot yan. Free reign, okay? So, hindi ko kaya ng poetry, ganyan. But, yes, I feel fine. Since I'm writing on science, I want them to do science. So, we opened the, my course to, I said, don't make it required. Open it to whoever wants to take it. They opened it, many people came. And on the first day, I told them my expectations. I said, you are the ones who want to be writers. Yes, they have big dreams. They want to write. I said, your English teachers already ask you to write poetry. Yes, they have. Blogs. Yes, they have. They ask you to write profiles. Yes, they have. I said, okay, I'm going to give you something which I'm sure no English teacher ever asked you to write. Science essay. Nako, the kids did not like it. The ones in my English class are not the science majors. The ones in my English class are the humanities majors. So when I said, my requirement is a science essay, nagwala yung klase. Atenista sila, may ingay. Okay? Ma'am, kaya nga kami nagganito, nag-English kasi walang math. Ma'am, remedial club. Remedial daw sila sa math, bagsak daw sila, galit sila sa math, galit sila sa science, ayun lang physics, et lahat, nothing. Okay? May isa pa. Ma'am, can I write five other essays, which is not on science, okay? which is equal to one science essay? But no, okay, you cannot. So my expectations were high. I said, you want to be writers. The, all of them want to work for Inquirer. They want to be on ABS, CBN. They want to be on this and that. I said, Inquirer ka, sige nga. Sabi ng editor sa'yo, write about tuberculosis. Sabi mo, hindi ko alam kasi wala akong alam sa science. Write about Renewable energy, ayaw ko kasi hindi ko kaya yon. I said, you cannot have a choice. Writing just just mean you just want to write about your sadness and your depression and whatever. It's not that. Writing is just writing not for you, but for society. So when I, they were still not convinced. It was the first day. And ito yung sinabi ko. If you don't want to do this requirement, you cannot take the course. You can leave because I have a waiting list of people who want to take the course. Nobody left. They were grumbling, but nobody left. But they would have hated it. It would have ended there if I just said, ito yung assignment, tapos na. No, alam ko takot sila eh. Alam ko ayaw nila eh. Alam ko hindi nila nagagawa eh. Pero atinista sila eh. Kailangan eh. So, that was November. This was uh, second, second semester, November to March. November first day, I told them that. The submission was first week of March. But all through that time, first, how do you write a good science essay? First thing I said, you have to choose the topic. We spent one week, three meetings, three hours, just on making them choose a topic because they said there was no topic they liked. But you know in the end, when I said, okay, choose a topic you'll hate the least. You know? I will tell you the topics they, told, they did and they're so creative. One person, his grandfather was dying of Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's yung topic niya. Another one, her mother, they had a history of breast cancer in the family, Rina, so she did breast cancer. Another one, Cindy, she said her favorite show was CSI at the time. Okay, CSI in, and she said, Ma'am, meron bang Pinoy na CSI? Kilala ko yung science community, there is. If you have, just in case you want to know it, Dr. Cora de Ungria, UP has a DNA molecular lab, and they do CSI exciting stuff. It's just we don't know about it. So I said, if you want to write about CSI, you can interview Dr. de Ungria. She was happy. She did it. And then the, the head 
<coughs> I had the athletes in my class, so one of the athletes, the president of the mountaineering club, the Loyola Mountaineers, he said he wants to write about the science behind a marathon. Ano mayari sa katawan mo kung 26 miles ka, and then you know, yung mga, you know, all the hormones, everything, yan. So we decided he would do that. Look at how creative their topics were. And one last, Martin Villanueva, who was a sophomore at the time, he was very angry that his friend, who was poor, could not afford chemotherapy and is suffering from cancer. Martin wanted to write about chemotherapy, not about cancer. Madali yung sulatin yung cancer. Mahirap sulatin yung chemotherapy, the process, anong nangyayari sa katawan mo when, you know, the white blood cells, the, the chemicals come in, etc. And these are people who are humanities majors. So they chose their topics. One week. Three weeks, I help them do research. Hindi yung research na Wikipedia, magka-cut and paste ka, hindi ganun na research. Okay? This is real scientific research. So the chemotherapy had to talk to a doctor. The Alzheimer's had to talk to a neuro. Cindy had to talk to Dr. Coro de Ungria, etc. It's not, it's not watered down. I want world-class writing. I want world-class research. So we did three weeks on that. And then they had the first draft. And the first draft was put on Yahoo groups and everybody commented on the Yahoo groups. And ang, alam mo yung humanities, akala natin, an ano nila, masak medyo masakit silang mag-comment. They comment on each other. The assignment was to read each other's essays and see what's the good and bad about it. Nako, I had to step in in the middle because the essays were, well, the first draft is never the best one. And some of them were saying, pare naman, ang pangit nito. So we go, hey, you do not say that, okay? You don't say, ang pangit niyan, or you know, you don't say anything bad unless you can give a suggestion which will make it better. But the humanities people tell me they're used to crit critiquing each other's essays. They don't feel bad about it. I said, well, I'm not humanities, I'm science. I don't like it if you insult each other, so. Yun. And they got into the act. That was December na, okay? And January, over the Christmas break, they were supposed to do their second draft, then their third draft. And I thought everything was fine until the middle of February, Dr. Toby Dairit, the Dean of the School of Science and Engineering, found out I was doing this creative science writing for the humanities, and he said, please, can you ask your two best students to submit their essays for the popular science contest. The popular science contest is usually open to the scientists, to the nerds, okay? the science people. So, sinabi ni Toby, we have entries from math, physics, chemistry, wala tayong entry sa mga humanities. Eh, wala naman. Of course, walang entry sa humanities. Takot nga sila eh. So, he said, give me two. I did not know who were the best two. Because my class took it so seriously, it was going to be more than two. So I went back to the class and I said, I don't want to play favorites. All of you will submit your paper to the science contest. That was, Doc Quina naman, mga science yon, matatalo kami. I said, I don't care kung matalo kayo, pero in this, for the spirit of Ateneo Harmony, let us let the arts and sciences work together. Let us show the science people that the arts people also know something about science, enough to write about it. So grudgingly, they all submitted. All, the entire class submitted their essay. A week after they submitted and the results came out, I went to the class and I said, hey, guys, let us congratulate Rina, the breast cancer one, because she won honorable mention in the science writing contest. So tuwa tuwa sila, yehe, ganyan. And I said, actually, the judges also told me they were very happy with Cindy. Cindy is a CSI. She did a popular science on genetic engineering. So to want to, the judges are science people. These are not arts people, they're science people. So I said, you know, the judges like Cindy, so to want to yung klase. And they thought that was it. I said, well, actually, no. The judges also said, that they were highly impressed with the president of the Loyola School's Mountaineers, TJ, who did the science of the marathon, fast twitch muscle fibers versus slow twitch, what happens if it's aerobic versus anaerobic. Yung mga, he did it in a very engaging way. And 
They asked me, Mom, you mean three of us won? I said, yeah. And how many people won the awards? I said, three. No one else won the others. And you know, ang alam sinabi nila, you mean natalo yung mga physics, math? I said, yes. And dun sa award, the awarding was done during science week. And I was, I was teaching math, so my math students were in front, but I was seated with the humanities students at the back. And you should see it. Science week is best research, best ganito. When the best research was flashed, the auxiliary, the, 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 aux, the auxiliary palang linear transformation of the galwa ganito, yung mga estudyante ko, mga pati yung title palang, di na namin alam, okay? That's, that's, that's the divide. And then mga iba, Ma'am, ito pala yung, this is how it feels pala to be in the company of the nerds. Kasi, di ba? Kasi, kasi buong science week yan eh. Tapos sila parang, di ba, mga artista, ganyan. But you know how their dignity went up. And how many of them told me, you know science, it's not so bad after all. And how many of them were majoring in poetry and because of that class, they shifted to nonfiction. And this is the not end yet. Pwede pa nanalo sa Ateneo. There was one student I wanted to win who did not win. Martin Villanueva, the chemotherapy. For me, he was the best writer. I was very shocked to find out he did not win the Ateneo contest. So I talked to the judges. I said, isn't it obvious he's the best one? How can you let everybody else win? Kahit na estudyante ko, kung siya yung pinakamagaling. Ang sabi sa akin, Martin was very angry. And when he was writing, his anger spilled on the page, which made everybody feel uncomfortable, so they did not make him win. So, and the class was telling Martin that. This was a class we're in, hindi lang ako nagtuturo. Remember I told you, the critique was done by everyone. The class was telling him, pare, ang talaga, nagagalit ka talaga sa mundo, yung ganon. So, alam nila. And the class and myself, but also the class, told Martin, if you really want to be a writer, you have to learn to keep your emotions in check. Because if you're always very angry, nobody's going to listen to you. Martin took that to heart. And what did he do? He revised his essay. March came. When March came, wala na, tuwang tuwa sila. Ma'am, do you have a second course? Sabi ko, wala na, napagod na ako. But March, it was done. But I told them the last day of the class, I said, I sometimes judge the Palanca Awards. I said, many of the essays here are pala palangka material. Ang sabi sa akin, Ma'am, hindi yung palangka, para sa teacher lang namin yun. Para sa professors namin in English and Filipino, hindi kami. I said, okay, this time I will not force you to do the palangka. Okay, but I, let me just tell you, some of you can do it. I did not know that they would take me up on that challenge. That was March. That August, when I opened my email, I saw an email from Martin Villanueva, bold letters. Mom, great news, thank you very much. Please open and read, urgent. Ako, binuksan ko, one-liner. Mom, thank you so much. I cannot believe it. My chemotherapy essay won the palanga. Martin was a sophomore student. He won over his Ateneo English and Filipino teachers who joined the Palanca. Nobody knew who he was when he won it. Sino si Martin Villanueva? Matanda na ba? Sophomore student. And he was doing science essay. Have high expectations and help them fulfill those expectations. Because as I told you, I'm about to end with that, that very insulting question asked for me, kung ang galing mo, bakit ka teacher lang? Ang sinabi ko, kasi magaling ako, kaya teacher ako eh. Sinabi ko, straight. But we have to prove that we know what we're doing. Kaya nga yung love and knowledge. And I ended by telling the business people, and I will also, also end by telling you, teacher is, being a teacher is thrilling, being a teacher is dramatic, being, but being a teacher, and be, if you really love them. I told the business group, 
because magaling ako, kaya nga ako maging, kaya ako naging teacher. And also because I told them, teaching is the hardest job in the world. You are sick. Your heart is breaking. Your kid is in the hospital. You have to go into the, hos in the hospital. You have to go into the classroom and act as if you are totally okay. You have to smile because you cannot, even if, even if you feel like crying and just staying at home, you cannot. Why can't you? Because you love your students. Because it's a choice. Because you want them to grow. And you want that when they become teachers and they become scientists, they become writers, they become TV announcers, they become ballet dancers, they become athletes. You want them to be, you want them to be like you. And you're their best role model. Congratulations, everyone. You, you graduated well today. Taking education is an act of courage, but it is something our country so desperately needs. So mabuhay kayo, mabuhay tayong lahat, mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Thank you.